Hey guys, what's going on? This is Teach TV. I'm Mr. B, and we are going to be talking about lighting today. First of all, uh, here is the sock that you guys need to find. It is my golf sock. Uh, it'll be somewhere in the video. Make sure you find it. Comment below if you find it. Like and subscribe. Let's go. said we're going to be doing lighting today in our film work. I want this to be a video where students and teachers alike can learn some things, some easy basic tips to move forward in making a final finished product. I also want it to be inexpensive because I realize that teachers and students don't have all that much money to be able to do what they need to do to hopefully get a good product with their lighting and their film. The first thing that we're going to look at is natural lighting. This is just using a window between you and your camera. This gives us a natural look that is light and bright. Uh, it also is just a soft look and it's also inviting. Uh, what we do need to realize that we need to make sure we shoot in the day. Uh, we need the sun for this as well as we need to make sure that we're working from a large enough window that we get enough light into the room to work properly. Secondly, we're going to be looking at some reflectors. Now, reflectors, you might think, oh gosh, that's going to be expensive. But the easiest way we can go about that is simply by just getting an office phone board from Officeworks or one of the stores like that. It's $5 and it will do the trick. All you need to do then is just shine some light or the, use the natural light that's coming in just to bounce that off and just get rid of any more shadows that you want to get rid of. The third thing we're going to look at today is a secondary light. Now we have our key light which is the natural light but we also have a second light that comes and helps to get rid of some of the shadows on the face, some of the shadows in the background and just make the whole place a little bit smoother and get rid of some of those harsh tones. Lastly, we're going to be looking at the angles that we use with our light. If it comes from the side, there's going to be a shadow that crosses the face. If it comes from somewhere else in front of us, it's not directly in front of us, it's going to create a bit of a shadow. It's called a Rembrandt shadow and it gives a triangle underneath the eye when you go from a certain angle. You can go from behind and you can fill out extra shadows and extra light there or you can go and use completely uh, artificial light, get rid of our natural light. We're going to look at what some of these look like right now. Uh, first of all, let's go into just looking at natural light and the setup for that would so look like. So this is what a typical natural light setup will look like. You'll have your camera right in the middle, your uh, window straight behind it, and you'll be quite, pretty close to the camera actually. Uh, there won't be much of a gap. As well as if we look at our second light here, we can see that it's actually bringing up some light into the front. Uh, from the position that the iPad is in right now, the lighting is actually pretty terrible. You need to be in front to be able to see the lighting that, that comes with the video. As you can see, I've now changed the angle of the light that is hitting me. I've gone into, uh, the room is now dark. Uh, it's just the artificial light working. And you can see that it's just creating a shadow across my face. Uh, you can change the way that the shadow works by simply uh, moving this subject uh, into a different position. So if I turn and face towards the corner of the room now, uh, there's a different type of shadow on my face which portrays a bit of a different emotion. And then if I just turn back uh, towards the light, now I've got a strong shadow uh, on this side but I've got a bright face over here. Um, so it's just about using different techniques and different types of uh, shadow and different types of light that can give us a different feel and a different environment into what we're doing. The last thing I'll show you is the Rembrandt uh, lighting. I'm not, a, I'm not amazing at this and I've got a link below that I think shows it much better than I can uh, but I wanted to give it a go anyway and just show you what I mean by it. So when our lighting is over here, it's about 45 degrees away from me uh, between the camera and between my right. When I look at my face, I've got a bit of a triangle that sort of sits up in here. That is when you know that you've got the right sort of angle for Rembrandt lighting and all it does is basically just give a bit more character to the face and it's used a lot in filming so that uh, people can be seem to be a bit more emotive. 
I hope this has been really helpful for you. I hope that you can make some wonderful videos and that your, your lighting will be spectacular. If you have any more questions about lighting, down in the link I have a video that goes into more depth, but I think this is just good for the basics. Thanks very much for tuning in. Like, subscribe. This is Teacher TV.